All right. Honestly, uh, I'm so thrilled to have both of, both of you together with me. Like, uh, you know, hotel guru, Anthony, and, and lighting guru, Mark. This is great. Um, I never hung out with another guru before. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> So let me first ask a question to my panelists to start conversation from there. So today's theme is like human-centric lighting for hotels. So human-centric lighting has been a buzz for a while, uh, for some time. Acuity um, has been also active in human-centric lighting, right? And how is the market reacting to it? Uh, hotel is one of the important application areas of human-centric lighting. That's why we are uh, talking specifically about hotel lighting today. When do you think the tipping point will come, especially in the hotel industry? So uh, today, yes, we, we've got human-centric lighting available in our products. Um, we've teamed with uh, multiple different companies in, in order to offer that technology. And when we go and we present that to lighting designers and um, kind of lighting specialists, um, they're all very interested to hear about it. We go in, um, or as we do now, we zoom in and meet with them and discuss it, and there's tremendous interest. And then they go and they specify it. And then it is the first thing that gets value engineered out. All of us who are in the lighting industry know what that means. And the main reason it gets value engineered out is probably because the owner, the person who's picking up the tab, doesn't value it, doesn't understand the value of it. So let me turn the question to you, Anthony. How do we get beyond that? How do we convince that hotel owner to not allow the lighting to be value engineered? Because I'm sure with your experience, you've seen value engineering across not just lighting, but everything within a hotel. You know, it's interesting. You know, I've been on projects where we've developed billion dollar hotels. So people who are trying to sell us things are like, well, it's only three cents more, 5% more. And it doesn't matter. Hoteliers, uh, whether it be general managers or developers, are famously uh, value engineering things out. I won't use the word cheap. <laughs> However, if we look at, we have a good example in the bedding area, in the mattress area. When you look at uh, the Western bed, all of a sudden, what happened? It went in. Nobody knows what's under the sheet. No one's ever looked under the sheet, unless you're on Hotel Impossible and you rip up sheets for a living. You never really looked at what you're laying on. You didn't care about what you were laying on until you had a bed and night's sleep until you were really comfortable. Then we were asking the brand, where do you get that mattress? Can I buy it for the home? So the key for the hotel industry is get the client to ask for it. So if you go into a room and you sleep better because of the lighting, the guest is going to want to know, where can I get that lighting? I want to come back to this hotel. Is it in your other brand, in your other uh, city? I felt like I've never slept like this before and I don't know why. I just, the lighting felt different. That is how you get that into the industry, in my opinion. Okay, and, and I, I fully understand that. I, gotta, I, I was telling some friends a story where we stayed at the Conrad here in New York. First time, probably five or six years ago, experienced a rain shower. Felt fantastic. And now it's one of the criteria we look for in a hotel. It's also something we want to kind of bring home and put in our uh, shower when we redesign our bathroom. That's all well and good, I want it, but how do I get that hotel owner to ask for it? Hotel owners, a lot of hotel owners are in the hotel business because they love the presentation of a hotel, of what it does for not only them, because a lot of hotel owners come from and grew their wealth in other businesses, not the hotel business. So it's almost like a trophy. A lot of hotels are like trophies for hotel owners, as you know, and that is a way to let them, like almost their competition. It's like if you have, let's talk about brands for a second. If you have one brand that has a high-end five-star hotel and all of a sudden their premier members are staying in this hotel and they're like, we have the best night's sleep ever. This is amazing. And now the other brand was like, oh, 
we can get that person to stay with us if we change our lighting because they're getting a better night's sleep or they had a meeting and nobody fell asleep. So it's really competition. It's getting it into the first hotel and letting people understand that I can actually draw the higher end customer to that hotel simply because of the lighting. That's really the way in. Uh, understood. So yeah, I get into the first guy and then the other guys want to copy it. What, one of the issues we have with um, even school systems is because, you know, uh, kind of the whole energizing factor, we want right. to have kids bright and awake and people are asking, well, will it improve test scores? How, how do we get the data to convince the first guy that people are getting a better night's sleep? Is there a way to you know, get that data, collect that data and, and, and prove it to him? It's an easy question with an easy answer. Right now, everything is being driven by reviews online. And it's simply looking at reviews and saying, I had a better night's sleep in this hotel. I don't know why. I think the mattress is great. And then you can prove, well, we haven't changed the mattress in 10 years, mm -hmm. but we changed the lighting. And that's how we determine when I'm developing hotels or running hotels is by the guests saying, this is what's important to me. And I have bought products and I have spent money simply based on the reviews. When I first came into this industry, everybody wrote common cards and that you left it. Now everybody writes online. So those online reviews are basically how general managers get their bonus how vice presidents of brand get their bonus, those service scores are critical. So through that, and, and people that have good night's sleep, how many people are on sleeping aids? I mean, everybody I know is, is taking the too, melatonin, too, Way right? too many, yes. Right, so when you can show that this is one way of getting a good night's sleep, what's the number one, I always talk about the restaurant business and the hotel business. The restaurant business is a want business. Right? You want to go to a nice restaurant. You, know, you can grab a Snickers bar. You don't need to go to a restaurant. But a hotel is a need business. You're staying in a hotel last night? Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to sleep on the subway. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you need to stay in the hotel. You need to sleep so you can come here and do a great presentation. So this is a need product. And the more we really explain that to the owner and the guests, once it's in the hotel, start showing that, hey, I don't know why I slept better because maybe they don't even notice the lighting, but I'm sleeping better. That's the way to get in. So if we were to use an example of, and, and, and we probably have to team up with a hotel owner, I think probably a airport hotel might be a good place to start where people are coming in, they're coming in from international flights, they're probably jet lagged, and you want to entrain them on the local time zone and um, potentially have them either go to sleep quicker and or wake up faster. Um, setting that up where we could say to a, a hotel owner, look, you're going to pay for this lighting anyway. How about we cover the delta and make it human-centric lighting and use the energizing and relaxing LEDs from Samsung in the lights? They have that, and then hopefully, through the reviews, as you uh, point out, for that hotel, that hotel owner is able to see, hey, wait a second, this is working. I can start using it across the rest of my hotels. And you can charge for it, because we can. you can say that there's one floor of this type of lighting or whatever, and there's an upcharge for that. You know, I've, in New York City, I'm not proud of it, but you know, we, on the 14th floor was one rate, but on the 15th floor, that was a high floor, and we charge for it. So once you tell owners that, wow, we can have certain you know, rooms or certain floors, and it's word of mouth, everything's word of mouth. When you look again, if we go back to the experience of the, the mattress, no one wanted to spend $700 on a mattress. Okay, no one, 800, 1100 when they first came out. But the guests were like, that's where I'm staying. And that's what made that brand. So you have to do twofold. You have to educate the people buying it, but then you have to really make sure you're focused on getting the reviews from the guest. Okay, so I could see a situation where myself being a Marriott Platinum, I get a free upgrade and the room looks no different online to the normal room I had, except this room actually has enhanced lighting. I'm going to sleep better. 
and are even better, I got to stay on the same circadian rhythm I had in my own house. A hundred percent. There, there are so many brands. If you just look at Marriott, Marriott has thirty-four brands, and uh, you know, on the podcast that I do, uh, we have uh, brands coming on. We have everybody coming on. And I can't keep up with it. They're like, oh, have you stayed at so-and-so brand? I'm like, I've never heard of it. They're like, oh, we have 400 of them. I was like, yeah, 400 of them. I've never heard of them. So they're all becoming so similar because they have to start developing. They're trying to separate by having more brands and saying, okay, if you're in New York City, you can't have a courtyard, but you can have this other hotel within the Marriott brand. So now I can sell it because I'm not out of the contract with this person because it's a different brand. But when you look in the hotel, it looks similar. They're, they're very similar. So there, so there's really a need to start separating mm -hmm. the brands. Yeah. And, and lighting is definitely a way to do it. And yeah, I have a question. I have a question it. to Anthony. So, um, yeah, we can talk about the differentiation that we can get from the lighting. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the timing, though, because this is uh, uh, almost like we are getting out of the pandemic. and. Uh, I mean, there must have been a right time for, um, you know, renovation of hotels. The pandemic must have been a nightmare, actually, to the hotel industry to some extent, right? But could it be uh, helpful for the hoteliers to think about the renovation of those hotels to implement those kind of additional benefit for their guests and, and, and better prosperity of, the, of their business? Would, that be, uh, would this be night time? Uh, right time to do now that? Now is a great time, but again, it comes down to anything else, right? Educating of why that Delta is different and why it's important. And because there are so many, believe it or not, we're developing more hotels now than we've developed in many, many, many years. If you, if you look at the big cities, you see a lot of hotels being built. So this is a perfect time. You know, a lot of hotels held off on renovations because they were just trying to get through the pandemic. But now they're putting money back into the hotels and also brands that had stopped doing inspections and, uh, and demanding a capitalization of that hotel are now back in the field, making sure that people are spending money and putting money back into their hotel. Well, uh, another th aspect to the whole pandemic is uh, for myself, and I, I, I assume for yourself and many of us, we're now all in our home office. We're got the office in the basement, you know, you get to uh, participate in your Zoom call uh, with the children dancing on the ceiling above. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, we uh, and kind of for many of us, we have now taken our home office and improved upon it. Um, I know for many, the early on in March of 2020, it was a fold-out table and a fold-out chair. We've now got an economic or an ergonomic uh, seat. We've got a better desk, and for some of us, we've actually taken the next step of putting human-centric lighting in our office to help yeah. us and, and improve upon that. And I, I now see on TV adverts talking about circadian rhythm. I think within the lexicon of the American public today, circadian rhythm is now something they understand. Uh, we, we've seen it for five years on our phones. You know, we've all seen where suddenly our phones were turning warm at night and they were cool in the morning. Do you feel that th that understanding is now going to start to translate to where people are going to expect it within the hotel? Yeah, a, a hundred percent. I'll give you, a, a, there's a airline that I fly and when I walk into the, um, the, the, the airline, they change the lighting. Now, I don't know what it's doing to me. I have no idea about the technology. But I literally fly that airline simply because when I get into the business class section, the lighting changes as the flight moves, and I love it. So absolutely, we're going to be looking for it. But again, it's, so, it's not a tomorrow. It's not immediate. It's not every single brand is going to buy the lighting. It's training them to understand what you just said, that the consumer is looking for it. Do you envisage a time where and kind of many of us, uh, some of us have Samsung uh, things at home, um, and we have routines that we run on our systems, so I don't have to even think about it. I wake up in the morning, 
the lights are energizing me in the evening, they all start to go to warm. Could you envisage a time where I, as a platinum, go in to check into my hotel and they download my persona to the room and that room is automatically going to the lighting that Mark Hand prefers? A hundred percent. I think it's happening now to some degree. And because, again, the separation of brands, there's really no separation. That's one way to separate. And um, I think I was telling you a story before where I went into a spa and the young lady asked me, what is my favorite scent? What's my favorite color? And I told her my favorite scent is coconut and my favorite color is blue. And from the desk to the table, maybe five minutes, I think I was in Hawaii, and it smelled like coconut, and the, the room was blue, and it blew my brains out. <laughs> so I absolutely think that that's where we're going, and it has to be, because again, people are spending more time at home. People are starting to realize, I have to have more flexibility. I have to worry more about me. I think there's not a person on earth that hasn't spent the last two years really reevaluating what they're looking for and being comfortable and wanting to be comfortable. So when they travel, a lot of people love traveling, a lot of people really don't like traveling. But if you can basically go to a hotel and pay that little extra because you're staying at a better class hotel and they're going to download your settings, whether it be music, whether it be lighting, whether it be scent, absolutely. Do you think they could take it to the next level around energy savings? I know it's straying a little bit off the, the topic here of human centric, but I could envisage where they, uh, I've now allowed the hotel to know my persona, know that sustainability and climate change are things I'm concerned about. And having the knowledge that if I've got a, my, my phone on me, they know it's my phone. I just opened the hotel room. But if that phone were to leave the room, all of the lights turned off and it started saving energy. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, the first thing that we talk about and the last thing we talk about is energy saving in hotels. And that is absolutely critically important. And not only important to us to save money, but also to corporations. You know, when, they, when we give them the contract, they want to know what we're doing to save energy and to save the planet. So it's become a standard. I mean, I worked at the Western Hotel. We were the first uh, lead uh, hotel in the city. Um, so, and the reason we did that, I'd like to say we did it because we wanted to save the world. Yes, we did, but m more importantly was we needed to, uh, there was a lot of corporations, especially overseas, asking us, you know, what are you doing for the environment? So we took the lead, literally, um, to do it. So absolutely. That's a great yeah, no, story. I, I, sorry, go ahead, Ilya. Um, actually, I have like a live questions coming in uh, sure. through our system. Sure. So uh, are you guys ready to answer some of those questions? Absolutely. If, sure. if I answer it right, do I get the galaxy or no? <laughs> is, is I think it about that. Choice question? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's, here's my first question from the audience. Hotels already provide guest-friendly lighting control that we can change the mood, brightness levels of the lighting at each room. What would Samsung's, uh, this is for myself, Samsung's hotel lighting be different from this function? So um, this is not just about the mood and brightness level. Um, okay, so. You stumped yourself, you stumped yourself huh? Right, <laughs> I mean, this was for, for myself. Okay, you might like to help me answering this question though. Um, this is not about uh, you know uh, only the visual effect of the lighting, but also the non-visual effects of the lighting that that affects your your uh, you know wake sleep cycle, right? So, um, I mean, if you can if you can see like a lighting in your home or hotel, uh, which is like a cool white that energizes you during night, uh, daytime. And you can also uh, turn the light to like a warm white and very cozy uh, looking light for nighttime. That's something you can do. But in addition to that, there's like a, some spectral components that you can control more. And then you get uh, yourself more you know, comfortable during nighttime, even, even with like a, a little bit, you know, cooler color temperature and bright lighting. That's something that you can play with. Um, so it's not just about the mood and brightness level that you feel from, from the hotel lighting. So I think I can take, I could 
take well, care of that question. Yeah, I, I could also say that cranky is a mood, and many of us get cranky when we don't have enough sleep. So changing the lighting to having this human-centric lighting from just being dim or just being a warm or a cool light, but having that uh, cyan either energized up or exactly. brought down for relaxation, it's going to help somebody sleep better. We're all in a better mood when we've had a good night's sleep. So you're not going to be cranky. And isn't that a better way to start the day? You know, and, you know when I was growing up, you know, when you were tired, you were just tired. Now everybody's talking about sleep. Everybody's talking, what's the better, you know, mousetrap for sleep? Like, I'm taking this, and I'm taking that, and I'm doing this. It's like, I think we've, we're, we're drinking more energy drinks, and we're, we're, we're doing all kinds of things to stay up, to go down, and, as opposed to just controlling your environment. And I think 10 years from now, five, I think it's going to be, this is going to seem almost like a silly conversation. I think the lighting is going to be as critically important as any other element in the room. More important, the most important. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of, look, if, if you can stop taking melatonin just to go asleep and it's happening automatically where you, you don't forget to take it one night and suddenly have a bad night's sleep and it's on automatic pilot for you in both your home and the hotel, I, I think everybody's going to be the better for it. Yeah, and hotels have been really bad at lighting and thinking about lighting. I mean, think about any woman that, you know, has been in a hotel you know, room trying to put their makeup on or, you know, or, or when I was putting my makeup on uh, for my TV shows, uh, it, it, the lighting's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. So we really haven't thought about it. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a been down hotel corridors trying to find my room number and gone, the lighting looks fantastic, but it's practically useless. I can't see the room numbers. How, how is this helping me? There, there's a hotel here in New York City um, that tried to copy another hotel that first came up with the kind of that dark, dim lighting that did a great job of it. Um, and then another hotel did it, and they had to change all their lighting in their hotel within a year because of common cards and reviews saying the hotel is just too, you know, it's just too dark. Actually, I have a second question that's a little more relevant. Are these products available in the in the market? So I think I'll, I'll tweak this question a little bit because uh, the LEDs are available, of course, but in order to uh, have these products accepted by the hotel industry, what, what should we do? I mean, you guys were talking about uh, the benefit, possible potential benefits of such kind of lighting in hotels, but it's, it's not there yet, right? So. Yeah. There, what would be the acceptance? I, I think there's definitely a, a chicken and egg situation here. Um, we can absolutely develop the products, and, and we have developed some. The problem we have is there's no point in developing something if there isn't a market for it. And the stumbling block we're running into, and what we discussed earlier, is stopping that value engineering, getting the initial hotelier to actually be able to say, yes, we'll do it. And you've had some great ideas of, of how we can approach that. Yeah, someone told me one of the products is online. So I went online and I actually bought it for my daughter that will arrive tomorrow. And if you can get those kind of lights into the person that makes a decision for hotel lighting for hoteliers, they can say, hey, this can separate you know, us from a diff another hotel. And then you put them in the room. So you literally put that light that I just bought on Amazon, that is your technology, uh -huh. right, and from, from your company. You put it in the room, and you, they know that light is there for them to sleep. So let's start with sleep first, right? That you, when you put that light on, that you're going to have a better night's sleep. And then when you start seeing that on comments, you start, people start talking about that, that's how you start getting in, in my opinion. Uh, so you're talking about the uh, only day, only night, the mock shaped lighting that you just got, right? Right. I see, I see. I mean, that light is great. Actually, I, I, I have very much pleasure using the only night during nighttime because whenever I try to read books, I really can't go over like a couple pages by reading books using that light. It's like a mock shaped light. I put them beside uh, my head in the bed and then I try to read books and then Wow, I mean, it's so different. It's so different. Yeah, absolutely. I can feel. You're not helping book sales here, Ilya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here's the sec uh, third question that I have. Um, can these lights be used in airplanes to overcome jet lag? Oh, absolutely. 
Uh, absolutely. Um, kind of, you mentioned it, and um, the I, I think the Boeing 787 was the first one to come out with that technology. The the difference, however, is the the Boeing's just like our phones are are taking it in what I'll call the the value engineered approach. Um, in that it is just a very simple, cool, and a very simple, warm LED. I think the LEDs, the, the relaxed and the energized LEDs from Samsung, take that to another level. It's turbo boosting that technology. And, and I would not be surprised if um, some of the companies out there, such as BE Aerospace, who actually fit out the interiors of airplanes would actually adopt that and start bringing that into play in airplanes. And then marketing it to the consumer. We all know whether it be a chip or something else. If a guest doesn't see it and doesn't understand it, but it's marketed to them with that brand, then they look for it. Yeah, and, and kind of having it in the airspace, the airline industry, just improving people's understanding of the technology, improving their expectations, setting their expectations that it's going to be everywhere. And then when they do experience it at a hotel, they go, oh yeah, I know what this is. I, I saw this on that TV show explaining the new 787 or whatever the new airline may or aircraft may be.